Hello, happy hump day. Sorry, I'm a little late today. I got distracted. I'm actually on vacation this week and totally forgot that it is Wednesday. So it's going to be a fun one. So here's what's going to happen. Um, I need to actually get onto my account here on my iPad so I can see everything that's going on. I hope your week is going um, well. I need to actually. All right. So I'm just going to hang out a little bit for everyone to join us. Um, so we're going to be doing a Christmas in July card because July is all about Christmas, right? Now, this is just to get us ready to jump into the holiday car, uh, craft making season. I know it's the middle of summer. I know it's hot out. And actually, here in Wisconsin, it's a little chilly today. Um, it's not the high 80s that it was all week. So, yeah, perfect day. It's kind of gloomy, overcast. Yeah, it's a really good day to make a Christmas card. So I know there's so many crafters out there that love to start making their cards early. So I'm going to go ahead and we are going to do a quick card today. I'm going to go ahead and flip my camera down. Hi, Barbara. How are you? I'm going to flip my camera down and we're going to get started. Um, yeah, so I'm going to try to make this quick. I hope you have a good lunch. Maybe you're running a little late too. Uh, if you want, share with me what you're having for lunch today. I'd love to hear. I'm going to be making tacos right after this. So let me flip the camera down. If you get dizzy, close your eyes for a second. There we go. Facebook is playing sassy with me today. So um, the way I normally orient my camera is not possible today so I'm having to play around a little bit so I apologize for that uh, for some reason it was reverse of what it normally shows um, so I don't even know if I'm gonna get my lighting right let me try something else here and I again I apologize I'm not trying to make you dizzy or anything See if that lighting will work a little better. Nope. So let me know if there's like some flashiness going on because it kind of looks that way on my phone where I'm recording from. So we are going to be using the Evergreen Elegance stamp set and also the Evergreen Punch. Now this does come in a bundle. Um, the bundle is found in our annual catalog. And it's on page 91. Uh, you can either purchase the stamp set alone or you can purchase it as a bundle. But I'm featuring it today because it is a part of my Christmas in July class that I am actually posting just uh, a little bit later today. So I'm going to show you a sneak peek of the projects in that class. So here we go. Hi, Beth. Um, so here is one of our cards. This is actually a card and a um, gift card holder. A quick little note card. There's actually six projects uh, this time. I'm just showing these really quick just to give you a sneak peek. This is a fun fold. You can use it as a gift card or as a uh, gift card holder. And let's see. So that was one, two, three, four. Oh, I love this one. Simple and clean. And then you will be making, and you'll get the directions for this, um, a little pouch. I'm just getting all the cards back in it to hold all your little projects. So this is a little pouch. It's a little card pouch. So uh, that is all part of the class. The class is $30. Um, you can uh, register for it. If you are not on my email list, please subscribe. I'll put the link below so I can send you the information. I can't actually post the link to sign up for the class um, on Facebook. I have to actually send it as an email. So if you're interested, please let me know. You make six projects. Um, and in addition to that, you are going to get some of the Tidings of Christmas Designer Series paper. And I'll give you a little peek of that. It's in my pile of stuff right here. So here's a little peek of it. Um, yeah, I know it's kind of a hot mess. Uh, you'll be getting a little piece of shimmery vellum. You'll be getting the chevron woven ribbon. 
um, that's a whole bolt, and then you'll be getting a bolt of linen thread. All the supplies that you need to make all the projects will all be um, pre-cut and scored and embossed if necessary for you. Uh, the only thing that I won't provide is the stamp set and the punch. You will need this as the bundle for it. But let's get started on today's card. Uh, so I'm going to have a piece of Evergreen Elegance. Uh, Evergreen Elegance. Hello. Evening Evergreen. That's what this color is. It is measured at 8.5 by 5.5. We're going to go ahead and score it at 4.25. Use your light color blade, not your dark one. The dark one will cut it. So we'll just score that right there. And I'm going to actually um, do a little bit more than I normally do in these quick videos. I'm going to show you how to cut your white card stock. So this is basic white. It is 8.5 inches by 11, so that's a full sheet. I'm going to show you how to quarter it up so that you can use it for a card front and the inside of your card. So the first thing that you want to do is put your paper in the long way. And you are going to go to this five and a quarter inch mark, which is right over here. So follow your ruler to five and a quarter. And you're going to take your dark blade and just simply cut down. All right. Then we're going to take the second piece and also cut it at five and a quarter. Normally I have a lot of this already prepped up, but I did not today because I've been using it. I'm going to now turn this and I'm going to cut it at four inches. I'll slide this piece over and cut it at four inches. And since I already have the trimmer out, and I know I make a lot of cards, I'm going to take this first piece in. I'm going to cut this at four inches as well. And then I'll cut this at four inches. So what I really have is just a little strip of half inch. Keep those because these are perfect for stamping greetings on. All right, so we're going to end up using two of these. One will be for the inside of our card, just like this, and the other is going to be used on the card front. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a piece of the Tidings and of Christmas uh, Designer Series paper. So there is a couple different sides. I think I think we're going to use this side today. Originally, I was going to plan something else. Um, you know what, I will. I'm going to go with my first uh, thought, and I'm going to go with this cute little, I, I guess it's a holly-like pattern, but we're going to be using that. So I'm going to cut this piece down. So this piece comes as six by six. So what I want to do is I want to cut this down to be um, three and three quarters wide by five inches long. So I'll slide it into my trimmer at three and three quarters right here. And then I'm going to turn this and go to five inches. So while I'm doing this, I'm going to tell you about a couple events. So I am going to do a mock workshop tonight, and you are all welcome to join. It'll be on my Facebook page. Um, it will um, be all about the um, sorry Stampin' Game Night. Um, and what I'm doing for that is uh, we're playing Stamping Bingo. And Stamping Bingo is a lot of fun. It's really easy to play and great ways to win some awesome prizes. Um, and we'll also be doing make and takes. But I had a lot of people really question what that was like and what it was all about. So I decided uh, this month to do a mock one. And then next month, uh, you can sign up for it. Um, usually, it'll be $39, and it includes at least $20, $15 to $20 worth of product. You'll get make and takes. We'll play at least three games of bingo. And I like to give out some bundles and things like that. If we have more than 10 people participating, uh, that means they've registered for the workshop and they've paid for it, then I will actually be drawing... Um, for a hundred dollar gift certificate for one of the winners of bingo. All right, I just want to go back here and we've got our layers just like this. And I am going to actually take my um, die cut machine and I'm going to pull in. Now, normally I would probably use my layering circles, but I'm going to ch change it up a little bit. I am going to actually pull in, let's see if I'm going to use my Tasteful Labels die, 
and I am going to use this one right here. I'm going to run the designer series paper through my die cut machine. So let me get my plates here. Now, because this is three and three quarters inch wide, I am going to have to use my larger die cutting machine. I won't be able to use the mini. The mini can only handle pieces that are um, three and a half inches wide. Hello, Judith. Welcome. All right. So I'm just going to get this piece in here. I'll slide this through so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got my sandwich here. And I'm just going to put this piece in here. I'm going to layer that right in there. I want to center it um, in between both sides there, just like that. And I'll run it through real quick. And sorry, I just need to push my sandwich through a little further here. So it is Lunch Break Live because we're talking about sandwiches here. So if you haven't used a die cutting machine before, you need to have your sham, your cutting plate, and then your... Uh, base so that you can run it through the die cutting machine. All right. And because the designer series paper is so thin, you can actually cut two pieces at the same time. All right, we're going to save this piece for later. So next, I'm going to... Now, if you don't have a die cutting machine and want this image, you could actually just cut out a rectangle here. All right, so we're going to have this right here, just like that. I'm going to grab some ribbon. And actually, we may just end up using this piece right now. Yeah, I think that's going to look really pretty. So I'm going to go grab a piece of ribbon. And I want to use one of the new colors as well. So I'm going to use the Soft Succulent. And it's a little lighter green. Okay. And I'm going to take my shimmery vellum. And this is the Evening Evergreen Shimmery Vellum. I'm going to cut a strip that's about two inches wide. And I'm going to leave it at six inches. So, so let's go to two inches here. All right. Love that shimmery vellum. It's really pretty, so it's got like a little shimmer to it, hence the name shimmery vellum. I know I'm so original, aren't I? Okay, so next we're going to go ahead and pull in our evergreen punch here. So this is the design that we're going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it open, just like that. So I'm sliding that out, and I'm going to insert this. Now, when I'm inserting it, there are two, I don't know if you can see it in the video, there are actually two lines here. There's one here and one here. So you want to start your cardstock that you're putting in here at one of those lines because you don't want to actually punch the whole thing out right now. So I'm just sliding that in. Okay. And the line is right about here, so I know that that gets slid in. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push down on it. And now we can see... Gotta be careful with this really thin paper that it punched out this image. But I want to keep going because I need a piece that's wider than that. So I'm going to just slide it back in. When I do that, I am going to actually line up my trees right here. So I'm pushing my one edge all the way to this edge here, and then I'm lining up my trees right in here. I'm going to set that down so I can line it up and I can see it. I just need to slide it over a little bit. So I actually have three of the trees lined up. So then I'm going to hold it in place, push down again, and gently slide this out. Again, because this is such thin paper, I like to turn it upside down so I can slide it out easier. And this is just scrap. Okay, so I'm going to put my punch aside, I'm going to bring back in everything here, and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this, and I am going to, on my shiny side, shiny side up, I am going to just adhere these across. So you can see I have a little bit longer strip than I need, so I just need to bring in my snips here, and I'm going to cut that off, and cut that off. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually adhere it to my designer paper. So that is just the flip side of this. I'm going to slide this up. And I'm going to go right about there. Just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere that down. So I'm just going to take some liquid glue. Now, when you're doing this, you need to um, you do need to be careful because liquid glue will kind of show through. So let me grab my silicone mat. And when I do this, I'm going to just kind of use the tip here to kind of give it to kind of more, more like color, I guess, is what I'm doing. I want that to be even in the back so I don't have a lot of white little streaky showing. You could take a sponge and um, dab it on too because don't forget when you're using vellum, it shows through. All right, so I'll slide this up and I'll flip this over and I need a little bit more adhesive right over on this one. You can also take it with your finger and smooth it in too. I just don't feel like having my fingers full of glue. All right. So let's slide this in. And I'm really going to kind of have my trees be on this bottom here. All right. And I am going to trim it off a little bit. And that's okay. So I'm then just going to gently push down on here. So because I made that glue so thin, you really can't see it through there, right? And then I'm just gonna press that a little bit more so the glue kind of goes to the edges of the trees, right? Then I'm just gonna flip that over and I'm gonna use my snips and go along the edge of the die cut here, just like that. Pretty quick and easy, actually. Now, if you wanted, you could have actually adhered this and then run it through the die cut machine. I This is just as easy. All right. So here we go with this. Just like that. So how many of you actually start your Christmas cards early? I usually do not do my cards until October. Uh, just because I get so busy that I don't think about it. That and I like to wait till the holiday catalog comes out. But we have some really neat um, products in our current catalog for Christmas. So I thought, you know, I get a little head start. All right, so here's my trees, just like that. All right, I'm going to go ahead now and um, adhere these things onto my card base. So let's go ahead and take this first. And you can use seal, you can use seal plus, whatever you have. I just happen to have this handy right here. I like to open up my card front and set this right in. Okay, give it a good rub, make sure that glue gets dispersed equally. I'm gonna go ahead and go along the edges here now. And my glue is kind of running out. Sometimes you get a smack on the table. It'll give you a little more glue. But eventually it's going to have to be replaced. All right. So now I'm just going to center this. Just like that. All right. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop this up actually on dimensionals in here instead of adhering it on there. So let's get out some dimensionals. <clears throat> now I just went through a whole bunch of dimensionals, so I know I have a new pack. Here we go. All right, so. So all this month, I'll be featuring different videos on um, cards and projects you can use all for the holidays. You can easily swap out the stamp set though and any one of them that I make and change it up. Maybe you can make it for a birthday or anything else. So I'm just going to kind of center that right in there. Here we go. Nope, I was a little off. And because I didn't push I didn't push too hard down on my dimensionals, I'm able to lift that up. There we go. 
camera is right where my head would be. So it's a little off, but uh, that's okay. All right. So now I need to have a sentiment and I also need to have some ribbon. So let's see. I'm going to just take a piece of ribbon here and I'm just going to tie a bow. And I don't want really long tail, so I'm just making my little bunny ear bow here. And pulling that through. And then I'm going to hold it in the center here so I can pull my loops to kind of be where I want. Tighten it. And then I can keep adjusting to the size I want. And that way I have that nice finished look on the front. And this needs to be just a little shorter here. There we go. Well, I'm going to make that just a tad smaller here and it wants to turn on me. So like I said, if you're holding that knot in the middle there, it keeps your bow from twisting. All right, there we go. All right, so I'm going to bring in my sharp snips and just cut these tails off a little bit. This is going to be going up here. I need a piece of my basic white here. And I want to make sure that this is actually going to fit my, where did I put my stamp set here? My sentiment. It is kind of big, so I'm not sure I may need a bigger piece. So let's pull this in and let's see how it's going to look. So... It looks like it's not going to fit, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab a piece of Scrap Whisper White, and I'm going to cut a three quarters inch piece, and let's see how that works. So I have a little baggie of scraps that I put aside, so whenever I'm cutting scraps, I just put in my little baggie here. So we'll grab that one right there. Bring in my trimmer, and I want you to be able to see, so let me flip this around. So over here is the one inch mark, so when you lift this guide up here, you have a half inch, or you have a quarter inch, half inch, three quarters inch. It is easier when you're using a small piece of paper to use this side of the ruler to cut. So here I've got it at the three quarter inch. All right. I want to make sure that that's going to actually fit. So I'm just going to center it right here. It's going to be tight, but it'll fit. So, you know what? Let's just go up to an inch. Let's just make it easier on ourselves. Okay. So now that I got this here, actually, this doesn't look straight. Let me give it a trim here to straighten it out. All right. Now I'm going to go to an inch. Now, a trick about this, I like to take my blade from here to here when I'm using a small scrap of paper. It just makes it easier to cut. Oh, Beth, that sounds fun. You'll have fun making your cards with Amy. By the way, I just got your card today. It was beautiful. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you here. You didn't have to thank me for it, and you didn't have to put in all the extras. But thank you very much. It was a beautiful card. Okay, so here we go. I'm leaving this a little longer because I am going to just uh, go ahead and make my own little banner on it. I don't know why my camera there is throbbing. <laughs> I just noticed it was going back and forth. It must be trying to focus on what I'm doing. So now I have this. And I'm going to just actually keep this very monochromatic. Uh, you could actually pull in your... Um, cherry cobbler to do this with. I may actually do something else with my cherry cobbler here. You know, I really like how this will look, but let's go ahead, let's pop it up and make it a little bit more festive. So we're going to use our cherry cobbler ink. So here's my cherry cobbler ink. Let me get my block here. And this is a red rubber stamp set so you don't have to worry about having a mat underneath your stamp when you're stamping so i'm going to go ahead and just pull that up i'm going to um, move this right here so i can get a better 
angle at it. Now this is longer than I need. That is so I can make my banner. So I'm gonna go ahead and hopefully that's centered. All right, uh, you know what? I don't like it, so I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna bring a piece of scrap paper in because this is really damp. You know what? I'm just gonna use that side. I've got a <clears throat> yucky thing on the other side of my paper, so instead of having to pull out another piece of paper, we'll just make do with what we got here. So let's close up the stamp pad because it is a dark color, so it will attract my fingers to be put in there. All right, now if you could bring in a punch to do this, or you can actually just make your own little banner. I'm just going to make my own little banner, so I'm just going to cut in to the middle there, and then I'm going to take from corner to where I just cut, and then corner to where I just cut. And then I'm just going to flip it around. We'll trim this side just a little bit. I think that was a little bit bigger. All right. So then we'll go in here and just trim it in. It may not be perfect, but that's okay. You don't have to be perfect when you're stamping because it's homemade. All right. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a little curl here. So I'm just taking and kind of curling it just a little bit. Here we go. Just to make it look like a banner. And I'm going to add two dimensionals right here. So one on each side. Oh, I got the paper and not the dimensional. <laughs> okay, there we go. Yeah, I'm going to put this right in the front. I'm going to push down there, but I'm also going to kind of push in the middle a little bit. There we go. It just gives it a wavy look. And then I am going to take a glue dot and adhere this right to the top of my... Now, I could put it right up on top, or I could put it there. You can put it here. Wherever you feel is really adorable. I kind of like it right there, so I think I will put it there. So I'm just going to, like I said, use a glue dot. I'm going to adhere that on there. Oh, it was not a lame attempt. Your card was beautiful. All right. And we'll put this one right here. I'm going to kind of tuck my tail a little bit here so I can get it positioned where I want. So there we go. All right, so that is the front of our card. Like I said, just a quick and easy Christmas card. I'm going to go ahead and now bring in my layer from the inside. So again, this was cut at five and a quarter by four. Let's pull this and bring our evergreen. And I am going to grab a couple trees here. So let's grab a bigger block. Now I'm going to use one of my larger blocks this time. Because I am going to actually make a little scene down at the bottom. Not a scene scene, but you know, a scenic image here. So I'm going to put that one there. Actually, I should probably put it the right way so I can pick it up with my stamp. I'm going off. I'm going to be going off the paper a little bit. I'm going to put one here. And I think actually because the third one is going to go right here. All right. Let's move this one. I think we'll have to move them down a little bit because they're pretty big trees. Come on. All right. So that's kind of how my bottom is going, the bottom of the card is going to look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick these two pieces up. I'm going to put them on my block, just like that. Let's get straight. Just like that. Oh, that one turned. All right. And I'm going to use soft succulent because I do want that to be a little lighter in the background. So... I'm going to pull in the soft succulent. Move this aside. And we'll ink this up. Now, when I'm using a bigger block, I tend to like to flip it over and ink. 
Now, this is still going to be dark, so I want to see how dark it is. All right, so that's a little dark. So I'm going to use it just like this for right now. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do something really fun. And this is really cool. You'll really like it. It is um, a flicking technique. And I believe it's actually called thumping. So I'm going to take my markers. I'm going to take the soft succulent. Oopsie. Soft succulent and evening evergreen. And I am just going to take the brush end and I am going to thump around my evergreen. So I'm just flicking it just like that. And I'm probably adding more of the soft succulent than I will the evergreen, but we'll see. All right, so that was a soft succulent. This is the evening evergreen. And so I'm just adding a little bit in there. Maybe towards the bottom, I'll add a little more. So I'm just flicking this. All right. Okay. Now I need to just breathe on it. That kind of revives that ink. And let's go ahead and we'll stamp right down here, just like that. How awesome is that? I'm hoping you can see it. It just gives it a little, a little something. All right, so I'm going to go ahead now and clean my black off, or my stamps off here. And I like to use my... <clears throat> my cleaner here. When I'm using the red rubber, I find that these this cleans much better. So there is a little side that has little raindrops. So that's the side I put my stamping mist. And then I can clean this. I just feel it cleans the red rubber a little better than the chamois, but it's totally up to you. All right. Okay, so it's nice and clean now. <clears throat> And I must have sprayed my cardstock a little bit there. Oh, well. Okay, let's go ahead and bring in that smaller tree. We're going to put it right here. And we're going to stamp it a couple of times. So I am just going to use my soft succulent here. And what did I do with my block? I just had it a minute ago. Oh, well. Okay, here we go. I'm going to put it on here. And I'm just going to stamp along here. Stamp off a couple of times because I want it just to get gradually lighter here. There we go. Just to create a little forest scene in the background. All right. So we can actually close this up. Because now I'm going to just pull in. Okay, this won't close. There we go. I'm going to pull in my sentiment that says, May the beauty of the season bring you warm, joy, and warm memories to cherish throughout the year. So let's go ahead and get that on a block. That's not going to be big enough. Let's try this box. There we go, that should be fine. And since we used red for the sentiment on the outside, I am going to use the cherry cobbler again for the sentiment on the inside. And just stamp it right in the middle. There we go. I like a big Christmas sentiment because in this, that way I don't have a whole lot that I have to write. I can make my cards up quick and send them out pretty fast then. Sometimes I like to write a whole bunch, but then I usually write on the other side. All right, let's go ahead and get this adhered on the inside of our card. All right. So 
join me more because all this month, like I said, I will be featuring Christmas in July. Uh, I will be offering a second Christmas in July class to go. That one is going to actually feature the tidings and trimmings, uh, stamp set and dies. And that class is going to be all about gift giving. It's not really going to be cards. It's going to be all sorts of little 3D type projects. Okay, so here we go. Here is our card for today. And I hope you like it. Um, I hope you have a tremendous day. Um, and join me and check out the mock uh, Stampin' Up! workshop that we'll be doing tonight. It will be on my Facebook group. So come and join me. Have a great afternoon. Enjoy your lunch. Bye.